Former UFC heavyweight champion Kevin Randleman was recently inducted into the company's Hall of Fame. His wrestling base helped him become one of the most dangerous fighters during the inception of MMA. But he also finished his career with a record of 17 wins and 16 losses. So how good was Kevin Randleman actually? Hey guys, it's Keon and today I want to talk about the monster himself, Kevin Randleman. This one was requested by a lot of you after he got inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. But I also think his career hasn't been recognized enough, so I'm more than happy to showcase it in this video right now. Before we get to that, shout out to the undisputed members on my page. Patreon. You can get early access to videos like this one and a shout out before every video if you support me on Patreon today. Now let's get to it. The two-time NCAA Division I wrestling champion began his MMA career in 1996 after his wrestling coach Mark Coleman offered him to fight at the Universal Valley Tudo Fighting 4 tournament. In the opening round, Kevin fought Luis Carlos Macial. Randleman was pressuring forward for most of the fight when on the feet before he secured a takedown. From there, he connected with heavy ground and pound that forced Macial to tap. This win had Kevin advance to the semifinals that same evening. His opponent was Geza Kelman. It was a fight where Randleman was more successful on the feet with a few heavy punches and a big knee. He finally finished Kelman by taking him down and throwing ground and pound. So Kevin advanced to the finals in that same evening. Yes, three fights in one night. His opponent was Dan Bobish. It was a fight where the bigger fighter in Bobish was the aggressor and pressuring more on the feet and clinch. But once again, Randleman secured the takedown and finished Dan with strikes, thus becoming the Universal Valley Tudo Fighting 4 tournament winner. Five months later, he entered the Universal Valley Tudo Fighting 6 tournament. His first fight was against Ebenezer Fontes Braga. It was a fight that went on for the full 20 minutes where Kevin out-wrestled Braga for most of the fight and threw him out of the cage, which was to the enjoyment of the Brazilian crowd. Ebenezer stayed busy with strikes on his feet and off his back. We also saw Randleman's coach, Mark Coleman, get into a fight with the crowd. In the end, Kevin won the unanimous decision and moved on to the semifinals that evening against Mario Neto. It was another wrestling dominant performance from Randleman who finished the fight in under 12 minutes by strikes that forced Neto to tap. Kevin advanced to the finals where he fought Carlos Barreto. Barreto was the fresher fighter as his two previous fights before this one lasted for a combined 11 minutes, in comparison to Randleman's 30 minutes. Early on, Carlos pressured forward and was the aggressor in the striking. Kevin managed to secure a takedown but was then caught in a triangle choke that wasn't really tight. Regardless, the ref stepped in to stop the fight as he thought Randleman went out, but Kevin was okay which made his first pro loss very controversial. After this loss, Kevin entered the 1997 Brazil Open. In the first round, he fought Gustavo Homem de Neve. It was a quick fight that saw Randleman take the fight down immediately before throwing a big elbow that forced Gustavo to tap. He advanced to the finals where he fought Tom Erickson. The bigger fighter in Erickson denied Kevin's takedown attempts. The fight ended in under 90 seconds after the two clinched and Tom connected with big right hands that knocked Randleman out. Kevin claimed that he had a difficult time fighting Erickson as he developed a friendship with him prior to their match. After this loss, he made his UFC debut against Maurice Smith. It was a dominant win where he outwrestled Maurice for 15 minutes to win the unanimous decision. This win led to a fight with Boss Rutten at UFC 20 for the vacant heavyweight championship. Randleman immediately secured a takedown and began to throw heavy ground and pound. Boss was staying busy from the bottom with strikes of his own. And as the fight continued, Randleman wasn't doing much on top after securing the takedown. This is how most of the fight went and honestly, if it happened today, Kevin would have definitely won this fight. But the fights were judged differently back then where top control wasn't seen as significant offense compared to today. And therefore, Boss Rutin was awarded the heavyweight championship. A decision that was so controversial that it changed the way on how fights were judged and tallied. Regardless, Boss vacated the title due to an injury which had Randleman fight for for the vacant heavyweight title against Pete Williams. This was somewhat of a grudge match as Williams knocked out Kevin's friend and coach Mark Coleman back at UFC 17. Although Randleman was close to being finished multiple times in this fight, his wrestling dominated the fight and with the new scoring system, he did enough to earn the unanimous decision and become the UFC heavyweight champion. His first title defense was against Pedro Hizo. It was another dominant performance by Kevin where he was winning more exchanges on the feet and secured multiple takedowns throughout the fight. He won by unanimous decision. He went on to defend his belt for a second time against Randleman. Couture. Randleman was dominant early as he was able to secure takedowns in the first two rounds of the fight, but Couture secured his own takedown in the third, and once he got into the mount, he began throwing heavy ground and pound that forced John McCarthy to stop the fight. After losing his belt, he moved down to light heavyweight to fight Chuck Liddell. The fight ended in under 90 seconds after Chuck connected with a left hand that knocked Kevin out. Randleman was upset as he thought it was an early stoppage. Regardless, he bounced back at UFC 35 where he fought Hinato Babalu Sabra. He out-wrestled Babalu for three rounds to earn the unanimous decision. It also marked his last fight with the UFC before picking up a knockout win on the local circuit and signing with Pride FC. His first fight with the company was with Michiyoshi Ohara. It was an easy fight for Kevin as he was able to outstrike and take down Ohara. He won the unanimous decision and wasn't happy as it was an uneventful fight. His next fight against Kenichi Yamamoto was more memorable as he finished the fight with heavy knees from the north-south position, which was the first time anyone used this attack in Pride. He went on to fight Mario Hua at Pride 24. The fight was competitive as both men connected on the feet and controlled the other on the ground, but in 
the third round, Randleman connected with a counter left that opened a cut on Hua, which forced the doctors to stop the fight. His next fight was to determine the number one contender in the middleweight division, and that was against Quinton Rampage Jackson. Kevin attempted to take the fight down immediately, but was denied by Rampage, who eventually connected with a big knee. He went on to finish Randleman on the ground by strikes. Kevin was then set to fight Kazushi Sakuraba, but three months prior to the fight, he got in a severe car accident that almost decapitated him. Yet he was medically cleared to fight Sakuraba, and although he looked good with his counter punching and wrestling, Sakuraba managed to secure an armbar that forced Randleman to tap. After this loss, Kevin entered the Pride 2004 heavyweight tournament. He fought Mirko Krokop in the opening round. Mirko was considered as one of the best heavyweights in the world at this point, which meant he was the favorite to win the tournament. Randleman immediately went for the takedown, but Krokop denied all his attempts to take the fight to the ground. It was a good tactic because not only did it close the distance from Krokop's deadly kicks, but when it looked like Kevin was going to shoot for a takedown again, he instead threw a huge left hook that knocked Mirko down and followed that with heavy ground and pound that ended the fight. This win was a huge upset, but it also meant Randleman was advancing to the quarterfinals to fight his next opponent, Fedor Emelianenko. Kevin seemed to have residual momentum early on in this fight by taking Fedor down. And as Emelianenko tried to stand up, Randleman took a hold of his back and suplexed him onto the mat. What made this even worse was how Fedor landed on his neck, but somehow he survived and got on top position where he secured a Kimura. Following this loss, Kevin fought Ron Waterman. He looked good early on by controlling Waterman on the ground, but when Randleman tried to take Ron's back, he ended up on the bottom where Waterman locked up an Americana. Kevin's next fight was a rematch against Miracle Krokop. Much like his first fight, Randleman was pressuring with the takedown early, but this time Krokop got a hold of a guillotine choke that forced Kevin to tap. He then returned to 205 to fight Kazuhiro Nakamura. It was a back and forth fight that saw both men secure takedowns, reverse each other on the ground, and connect with ground and pound shots, but Nakamura was ultimately given the decision. In October of 2005, he fought Fadi Kokamis at Bushido Europe. He dominated the entire fight by securing takedowns and maintaining top position. He won by unanimous decision, which also snapped his four fight losing streak. At Pride 32, Randleman fought Shogun Hua. He immediately took down Shogun, but quickly got submitted by a knee bar. Because this fight was in Las Vegas, the Nevada State Athletic Commission suspended Kevin due to a false urine sample that was said to either be non-human urine or urine from a dead human being. He said he did it because he was on antibiotics and painkillers from surgery that wouldn't have allowed him to compete. Regardless, he was out for over a year due to the suspension, kidney problems, and a staph infection. He came back in May of 2008 to fight Ryo Kawamura, who he defeated by unanimous decision. He then made his Strike Force debut in 2009 against Mike Whitehead. He lost the fight by unanimous decision after Whitehead outstruck and outwrestled him throughout the three rounds. But I will give it to Kevin for almost finishing Mike in the third round after connecting with a big left hand. He followed this loss with a fight against Stanislav Netkov. Randleman was aggressive with leg kicks, takedowns, and reversals went off his back. But Stanislav won the fight by split decision, which was regarded as controversial. Back in Strike Force, Kevin fought Hodger Gracie. His striking looked good early until Gracie connected with the knee that dropped him. Hodger was now on top and attempting an array of submissions. And I'll give credit to Kevin for surviving for as long as he did, but eventually he tapped out to the rear naked choke. He then went to Russia to fight Baga Agaev. Although Randleman secured a takedown in the first round, Baga secured an armbar off his back that dislocated Kevin's elbow. After this loss, he decided to call it a career. He later started a non-for-profit program called Monster Wrestling Academy where he taught kids wrestling. But sadly, Kevin Randleman passed away in 2016 due to a heart attack after being admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. He was only 44 years old. So after going 17 and 16 in a career that saw him become the UFC heavyweight champion, how good was Kevin Randleman actually? So his record doesn't look impressive on paper, but I look at his career like I do with BJ Penn's. He was absolutely dangerous. His elite level wrestling and athleticism made him one of the best fighters early on in the sport. We can make the argument that he shouldn't have lost his fights to Carlos Barreto or Bas Rutan. And in that case, he would have been 11 and 1 in his first 12 fights, which is very impressive. And let's not forget that he started his career by fighting in tournaments where he fought multiple times in the night. What I'm getting at is that he had so much wear and tear on his body early on in his MMA career. And what contributed to this was his training as all these fighters went all out and destroyed their bodies in the process. On top of that, Team Hammerhouse, the fighting team he fought for, was made up of wrestlers, which meant Randleman didn't really evolve from being an athletic wrestler. But by the time he started to develop more of his striking and jiu-jitsu, his age in fighting years was way past his prime. So not only did he peak early, but he also peaked in the wrong time of the sport. Imagine if he began MMA today and trained with a world-renowned gym like the American Kickboxing Academy. I could have seen his career at the top last even longer than it did. And another issue in his game that I could have seen improve had he received present day training was his defense. So many of his fights he was winning before getting knocked out or caught in a submission. There were only a few losses on Kevin's record that I would consider to be clean losses. And to add to this, he was undersized in many of his matchups. My rating on his career out of 10 would be an 8. And I also put him in the top 20 of greatest heavyweights of all time. His induction into the UFC Hall of Fame is most definitely deserved as he is a pioneer in popularizing wrestling and MMA. But on top of his career, 
career accomplishments, he was known as a kind and friendly person, which I think is beautiful in contrast to the man they called the monster. My name is Keon and this is my take on how good Kevin Randleman actually was. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put it in the comments down below because I'd love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you in my next one.